Hey guys, welcome to SS Unitech, Susil this side and this is continuation of SSIS project. So this is part 5 of SSIS project and today we are going to see the one more real time project and this is a complex project. So if you haven't watched last few videos of this video series, so I would strongly recommend to watch those videos. So you can directly go on the browser and here you can search for SS Unitech and after that go inside the channel then go inside the playlist and here you will see the playlist which is SSIS interview questions and answers so you can play that playlist and here if you can see I have uploaded few videos which is related to SSIS project so I would strongly recommend to watch third fourth of this video series now go to on the slide so today as per our project so we are having the multiple excel workbook from where we need to load the data into the SQL Server table. But here we have a catch. So on those Excel workbook having multiple Excel sheets. So those Excel sheets are having either address information or customer data. According to the sheet name, we need to load the data on their tables inside the SQL Server. If the sheet name is having address, then we need to load the data into the address table. Otherwise, we need to load the data into the customer table so go to the next slide if you haven't understand about this so here you can understand so first we need to use a loop that loop is going to loop through all the files which is available inside a folder so it will be going to return the file name along with the file path after that we need to use another loop so this loop will be going to loop through all the excel seeds which is available inside the excel workbook so here we can get the seat name and if that seat name contains customer then we can go inside the customer and load the data into the customer table if its address then we can go and load the data into the address table and inside the address table as we have already discussed in the last video we need to check inside the country first if data is not available in the country table then first we need to load the data into the country table and after that we need to load the data into the main address table so don't worry if you don't understand then so we can go and try to implement this in the practical so first we can check the source data so here we are having these two files so these two are having the data for the month end and mid month so in the real time the data is coming twice in a month and we need to load that data once in a month so first data which is coming mid month around 15 or 17 and next we are getting the data on 30th so these two files that we have in this folder so we need to look through all these two files and loading the data into the table go to on the destination so inside the destination we could see we are having these three tables customer address and country table so we need to load the data in these three tables now go to on the ssdt and we'll try to implement our package so now we need to create few variables and those variables will be going to help us while implementing the package so first thing that variable is required for the source path so that source path is this one so in the real time this might be going to change that's why i am going to create a variable and this path will be going to use there and after that we are required to have the second path which is the folder path so by using the loop that we can say by using the first loop we can get the file name with the file path so that will be the folder path the second variable so it will be going to hold the value on that variable third variable that is the seat name so seat name is basically on the second loop we are going to loop through all the seats so we are extracting the seat name so that seat name will be going inside the seat name variable the last which will be going to check seat name variable so that check seat name variable means here we are going to check whether the seat name contains customer or address we need to do certain transformation on the seat name variable to get this check seat name so don't worry we'll be going to see in the practical so here inside the ssdt let me try to create these variables first the first variable that i told you source path so this is the source path and the data type that should be a string and here we can directly 
copy this path and paste that path in the value side. So it should be like this. Second, we need to add one more variable. This variable will be folder path. So this will be folder path and it is a string. The value which is coming on this variable from the loop. The third variable that should be the seat name. So this is from the second loop. And the last which will be the check seat name. So we will be going to do the transformation later on on this. Now here let me save this. First let me try to drag and drop for each loop container and make it bigger like that. Now double click on this. Go to the collections. So this for each loop container will be going to loop through all the files in a folder. So we can use the file enumerator right here. Then it is asking the path. So we can browse or we can directly copy that path from here and try to paste right here. But this is the static one. We want to make it as dynamic. So we can go inside the expression and we want to get this Excel file path, which is directory. And this should be come from this source path variable. We can evaluate. Looks good. Click on OK. Again, OK. Here, we want to extract only the file which will be going to have the Excel SX. So Excel SX. Whatever the file contains the Excel format, only those files we want to get. In the retrieve file name, we want to get full qualified path. It means it will be going to have the folder path along with the file name. Here we don't have any subfolder, so we don't want to traverse inside the subfolders. Now go to on the variable mapping. So inside the variable mapping, we are having this folder path. So this folder path we want to getting from this folder. So what were the files those are available will be going to loop through one by one and it is going to have the path on this folder path variable. Now we can click on OK. So we have done with the first for each loop container. Let me try to drag and drop the second for each loop container. This second for each loop container we can set here like that. So this time in the collections we are going to loop through with all the Excel seeds. So on that case, in the last video we have seen, we need to use the for each ADO.NET schema row set enumerator. Here it is going to ask for the connection. So we can click on the new connection. It will take few seconds. So this is we have already created. Let me delete. Click on the new. Here it is asking for server name, but in the provider, we need to select the provider which is OLADB provider for the access database engine. Click on OK. Now it is asking for server or file path. So this time I am going to provide path for any of this file. Let me copy this and paste it here. Now we can go in the all and here we are having the extended property. So in the extended property, we can call this as Excel 8.0. Now we can test the connection. It is succeed. Click on OK. Click on OK. Again OK. So everything looks good. Now we can see inside the schema. So inside the schema, we have this table. If we can select this set restrictions, then table name is coming in the second index. So zero for the table catalog, one for the table schema, two for the table name. We can click on OK. Go to the variable mapping. Here we can see the seat name. So in the seat name, the index that should be two. We can click on OK. Now everything is configured for the for each loop container two as well. Now what next we need to do? We need to go on the variable side and inside the folder path, inside the folder path, we can specify a static value for any one of this file. So let me copy any one of this file and go back to here and provide that value right there. It's not required, but I'm just providing that. In the seat name, 
here we need to specify any one of the seat name so that we could see let me try to copy this address USA first like this if you have remember in the last video the seat names are coming with the seat name and dollar so we can add the dollar right here now here we can see this check seat name so we can go on the expression and we'll try to evaluate for those so here let me click on these three dots and here we need to write the expression so as you can see in the seat name we are having this hyphen so before the hyphen we want to get the seat name if that is address then data should be go in the address table if that is customer then data should be go in the customer table so in this check seat name we are trying to get the seat name before this hyphen so how we can do that so this is very simple we can write the substring function so this is substring now we can start the bracket so we want to get this from this seat name let me put comma then it is asking for a starting value so we want to start from one then how many characters we want so for that we have a function which is called find string so we can use that function find string so first parameter of that find string is the seat name from where we want to find any string then what string we want to find that is hyphen then third the searching position so we want to start from first position now we can evaluate it is reflecting an error let me check what is that error go back to here so this is the substring seat name one then the find string okay one bracket should be closed right here because first bracket for the find string and second for the substring now we can evaluate and it looks good now we can click on ok so everything is set up for the variable side now we can close this and here i am going to check all these values so first of all let me go and try to get the script task inside this for each loop container now double click on this and here let me add the variable so i want to see this check name i want to see this folder name i want to see this seat name as well now click on ok let me click on the edit script it will take few seconds now it's ready here we can write the message box to check the output so let me use the message box dot so here we can have the dts dot variables and after that we specify the variable like this so first time i want to see the folder path then dot value dot to string and close the bracket now second i want to check for seat name so dds dot variables inside the square bracket we can specify the variable name and this time this is seat name dot value dot to string and we can close the bracket and last we want to check for the check seat name as well so dts dot variables inside the square bracket we can have the seat name so it should be like this dot value dot to string like that now we can close this and here click on ok so now everything is ready but i need to make few changes on this the first change let me go on the edit script again 
here we can see we have here we are checking for the check seat name we can ignore this because it will be going to take time to return the output in the message box because it is having the calculation now we can close this click on ok now one more thing go on this connection manager so as of now it's a static connection so we can go and here go inside the expression and here we are having a property that is server name so this server name is the file path so that is coming in the folder path so we can drag and drop evaluate click on ok again ok now we can save this and click on start so it is checking for the month end this is for australia canada others us this is for the customer australia canada others here you can see this is for the mid month for the australia so it is working as expected so let me stop this package now here we need to use few things the first data flow task we can use and after that we can use one more data flow task right here if we connect with the first one and let me call for address and let me call this for customer and here connect with this script task now double click on this and here we want to check expression as well as the constant so inside the expression what we want to do we want to check for this check seat name if this value will be have the customer slash if this is the true then we want to load the data inside this customer data flow task here we want to check for the address if expression and constant if that value of the seat name which is the check if this value is address so this is like a double d r e double s address less evaluate expression so this is true click on ok again ok so if we are getting the seat name which is the customer then that will go in this data flow task if that is the address so that will go in this data flow task so let me double click on the address first so inside the address what we need to do so first we need to check for the country table let me connect with the source first so our source should be excel file so we can drag and drop this excel file right here then we want to remove the duplicate in the country names so we want distinct country names so for that we can use the sort transformation and after that we want to look up with the table which is the existing table in the sql server so for that we have to use the lookup transformation and if data is not available in the country table then we want to load the data into sql server table so for that we can use the oladb destination so this is we need to set now double click on this excel source let me click on this new browse this time let me select any one of this file and click on open click on ok here we need to select the seat name so let me select for the address go to the columns so that is ok click on ok so we have done for this now we can connect this with the sort transformation this is static as of now we'll make it dynamic later double click on the sort transformation and in the country name we want distinct values remove the duplicate click on ok let me connect this with the lookup transformation now double click on the lookup transformation full cache is ok here we are going to check inside the sql server table so oladb connection manager is ok go to the connection manager here we need to set up a connection so let me click on new here we need to specify the server name so here we can see the server name so we can copy this and we can go on the ssdt and try to paste it there and after that here we can select the database so we want to load the data into ssis test database not test the connection it succeed click on ok again ok 
click on OK. Here from which table we want to check in the lookup. So for that is country table, go to columns. Here we have the country ID and here we can see the country name. So let me connect country name with the country name only. And in the output that is OK. Click on OK. Now let me connect this lookup transformation to the OLADB destination. So here we want no match output. But we need to do one more thing. So inside the lookup transformation, here specify how to handle with the no match entries. So obviously redirect rows to no match output. Click on OK. Here let me double click on this OLADB destination. On which table we want to load the data. So we want to load the data into country table. Go to the mapping. So country name should be going to map with the country name. That is OK. Click on OK again. So we have done all these things but everything is static. So let me try to make the dynamic in the Excel source first. So inside the Excel source, we can see the Excel connection manager. So here we can go inside the expression and here let me try to use the Excel source path. So this Excel source path is coming from the folder path. So we can drag and drop, evaluate, it looks good. Click on OK, again OK. So it is OK and now we can double click on this and here instead of this data access mode table or view, let me make it as dynamic. So we want to get the seat name from the variable and that variable is the seat name. Now we can go on the columns. So it is OK. Click on OK. So everything is OK. So we have loaded the data into the country table. Now we want to load the data into the address table. So we can connect this with this data flow task. Let me double click on this. And this time our source that again should be Excel source. So we can drag and drop that Excel source here. Then we want to load the data into the destination. So we can drag and drop this destination. Double click on this source. Here we can select this address or we can directly make it dynamic instead of the static. So this time seat name, go to the columns. We want all the columns. So it is OK. Click on OK. Here we can go and connect with the OLADB destination. Double click on this. Here we want to load into the address table. Go to the mapping. So all the mappings are succeed. But here you can notice one thing. We are having the country ID, but we don't have the country ID in the source. So how we can get that country ID? So for that, let me delete this connection first, this data pipeline. And after that, in between, we can use the lookup transformation. So let me try to drag and drop this lookup transformation, connect with the Excel source, double click on this lookup transformation, everything leave as it is, go to the connection. Here, we are going to match with the country table. So you can find out the country table go to the columns. So we want to match this country name with the country table again and get the country ID from this. Click on OK. Now we can connect this with the destination and here obviously for the match output only. Now double click on this and here it is OK. We want to load into the address table, go to the mapping. So all the mappings are succeed now. Click on OK. So everything is set up for the address side. Now we can directly jump into the customer side and try to build that as well. So double click on this customer and here our source that is the Excel source. So we can drag and drop that. And after that, the destination that should be OLADB destination. So we can drag and drop that as well. So in the Excel source, let me go in the variable first. So as of now, it is going to check for the address USA but let me try to make this as customer now because we are going to consider this for the customer. Now let me close this double click on this Excel source here instead of the static let me make it dynamic so we can select as seat name all the columns are coming so that looks good click on OK here we can connect with this 
poledb destination double click on that so here it is going to load the data into the customer table so we can select the customer go to the mapping so all the mapping should be succeed so it looks good click on ok so we have done for all these if we go so our package is configured successfully before running the package you can go on the package level and here we can see a property that is delay validation because it is going to validate for the excel seat name and all the things at the starting so that caused the problem because because in the seat name we can provide only one value either for the customer or for the address so one will be evaluated successfully and second will be going to fail so that's why we can enable this delay validation option as true after that we can go on this for each loop container level in all the level we can enable this delay validation so in the address again for true then for this again we can make it as true for the customer again we can make it as true in the connection manager level as we can make it as true for the second and for the last we can make it or not that does not matter so everything is looks good now now in the table first let me truncate all these tables so truncate table so first i am going to truncate this customer table second for the address and last for the country let me try to execute all these so we don't have any data in our table now let me try to execute this so click on the start so this is for the month end click on ok for the australia file so this should go inside the address it should not go anywhere this is because if you can see in this so at the starting we are having the single quote so this is the reason this is not going anywhere let me stop this and here while we are going to check let me double click instead of this we can specify single quote right there and in the customer as well we can specify single quote let me click on ok now let me try to execute this package so before that let me try to truncate all these tables and here we don't have any data now now let me try to execute and load the data into the table so click on start so this is for the month end file and this is going to load inside the address so it is going to execute address so first it will load the data into the country table then it is going to load data into this address table second for the canada it is going to do the same thing for the canada and going forward it will be going to repeat all these so this is for the others so this is for the us so now it is going to start with the customer australia then customer canada then customer others then customer us now you can see mid month file is going to start now click on ok so first address australia so this will be going to load in the address table second for the canada so i am going to pause this video until this package is not going to execute successfully so package executed successfully now go to on the sql server and here we can see the data should be inserted into the table as you can see all the data is available in the table in the real time we are required to delete the data that is truncate the data into the address table as well as in the customer table but we are not required to delete the data into country table so let me double click on this execute and here we can see the connections that we can select and here we can write the truncate statement for address and customer only so country is not going to delete click on ok click on ok so whenever we are going to process the data for these two files then it is going to truncate the data which is available in the 
customer and address table and at the runtime the data is going to insert in the country table if not available already so this is about this package this is a complex project so please watch this video again if you are not clear and still if you have any doubt then you can drop your questions in the comment box i will try to respond on your questions so thank you so much for watching this video please subscribe our channel to get many more videos and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our newly uploaded videos see you in the next video with new project thank you so much